This is very cool. We're going where very few people have gone before. <laughs> this is John. Hi, I'm John. This is my crew. Hey, you've guessed it, it's John here again with Tour Radar and Africa for Us. I'm getting ready to take you through an epic 3,000 kilometer overlanding and camping journey through the heart of Namibia and South Africa, through some of the most beautiful, diverse, vast landscapes I've ever experienced. Coupled with stunning African wildlife and crazy adrenaline fueled excursions, this is Africa. After a day of driving through the Namibian desert, we've arrived here in a tutorial. No, Okokoyo? Okokoyo. Okokoyo. We're here in Okokoyo in Otoyo National Park. We've just set up our tents just over here. We've got the, the beast machine with uh, barbecue going. Oh, so good. We're spending one night here um, and then we're off exploring the rest of the park early tomorrow morning. All right. About 7 a.m. We've just left camp. We go on a game drive. at the moment and we've got loads of uh, zebra coming in. There's loads of them. It was like Lion King in real life. Herds of animals were swarming towards a watering hole as we parked up our huge overlanding trucks and just stared out the window at the spectacle. I think the other people were pretty jealous of our high vantage points and comfy seats we had and we felt pretty smug about it. We came from Okokoyo this morning through Otoshe National Park and we've arrived here in Halale Camp. Now it is an absolute oasis in the middle of the desert. There is an amazing swim pool just here. We're just about to just about to get in. A few hours to relax, so we're gonna have some lunch later and then we're gonna go to the salt flats where we can take some epic infinity photos as they call it. Oh yeah. After some midday rejuvenation at the campsite and around the pool, which yes, it was in the middle of the desert, we headed out of the camp for an afternoon game drive in search of more amazing wildlife, where we ran into the elusive leopard. What an incredibly rare sighting, we all felt so lucky to witness one in the wild. We also had the opportunity to take some pretty cool infinity photos on some massive salt flats and the results were pretty cool. Later that night, we went down to the local watering hole and watched the rhinos do their thing at night. They were huge but so quiet and it was an absolutely amazing scene to watch. So another early start today, we got up at 6am, we've packed away all the tents already and we've had breakfast and we're about to head out on another game drive. On the way we're going to see the Himbas tribe, the local people of the area and just get to know a bit about the history um, and how they live the land here and yeah, it's going to be really really interesting. As we travelled through the multiple camps in Atosha National Park, in our overlander, every day was a new game drive and gave us more opportunity to see the animals. Rene, our tour guide, was extremely knowledgeable and gave us a lot of information about the flora and fauna at every possible opportunity. We were all so engrossed in the info that was being thrown at us, it was like living in an actual wildlife documentary. So we just arrived here in this village and we're being greeted by the people. We've got to do a handshake. If you are coming there, we give the handshake, for example. Moro, Perivi. Mm -hmm. Now what? Okay. Good morning. How are you? Good. Moro. 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 Perivi. Perivi. Now what? Now Moro. Perivi. Now Visiting the tribe was a truly unique experience. We got to see firsthand how they lived, what they did during the day, and the incredible craft work that they produced. We even took home a few souvenirs. Hey, 
So in the old days they, they ride Scary. these animals but luckily the law has changed and they don't allow it anymore which I'm very happy about. It's, it's still a bird, it's not meant to carry people around. <laughs> There's an area called Tilbach and Tilbach um, is, the, is the ostrich mecca of Southern Af of South Africa. <laughs> I am very happy to see the arrow all sink. Yeah. It's the cool. <laughs> Dinner is looking good. We've got tunes going. At every new campsite we had to set up the tents. They were super easy to put up and actually enjoyable to do. Due to the sheer size of the truck, it carried all of the tents as well as the memory foam matches to put inside them and made our sleep super comfy. We later then explored the markets. So we've just driven through the desert and we've arrived here at Brandberg or the White Lady Lodge. So Brand uh, means um, fire and Berg means mountain and you can see Brandberg Mountain just behind me over here. We're going to walk up there later. Um, but yeah, this is an oasis in the middle of the desert at the base of, at the, base of the mountain. were discovered in 1917 on the 4th of January by a German archaeologist called Reinhard Mack. And the paintings are 5,000 years old and then some of the updated ones around it are like two and a half thousand years old. Check out this landscape though. Reminds me a little bit of Morocco. Ooh, it's hot though. It's a bit hotter than Morocco. Ooh. We're here at this granite formation at the moment and it's where it's raining I don't know, maybe a hundred years ago, the water's flowing down here and it's created this amazing flat granite top with these natural slides down. Check out these little columns here. So columns is little, I don't know, slides? Is it it? Or the, where all the water's been flowing down. <laughs> After exploring Brandberg Mountain and the White Lady Cave paintings, we were rewarded with a show from the local a cappella group, which all sang incredibly harmoniously. Now, after a good night's sleep, we woke up to a bit of rustling, and to our amazement, there were elephants walking right through our camp. It was incredible to see. So you have your jumpsuit, you have your harness, uh, then we'll walk to the plane, the plane will be over there, so imagine that there's a plane. <laughs> <laughs> Can't see any planes yet, but I'm sure there will be. Good job, man! Oh, that was sick! Happy day, man. on the Namibian coast was an adrenaline junkie's heaven. The skydiving I did offered an insane view over the Namibian dunes and the Atlantic coast. We then journeyed further south and inland through the Tropic of Capricorn, seeing even more animals along the way to the famous June 45 National Park, 
home to the mega, mega sand dunes. Another amazing day in the heart of Namibia. Um, now we've got up super early this morning. We left um, the camp about half four. I've just quickly stopped at the, the front of the national park. We're checking out this sociable weaver's nest here. Now there can be 300 birds living in this one nest. Um, and the heaviest one I've ever picked up, I've ever found is 3,000 kilograms, which is ridiculous for a bird's nest. That's insane. But yes, we've just entered the start of the national park and we've got a 45 kilometer drive to the dune which is June 45, the most photographed June in the world. So I need to get myself some snaps. So Big Daddy is the world's biggest June at 380 meters. And well, if this one doesn't kill me this morning, uh, I might try and climb that this afternoon. There it's behind. There's only one way to get down a sand dune. <sighs> 20 minutes. Down in like up one. <sighs> up here, standing in the middle of what used to be an oasis. Now this is very, very cool. So this oasis. Uh, was here around 900 years ago. Um, so these trees here, 900 years since they've died. Now they're busy petrifying. And what that means is uh, that they're eventually they're going to turn to stone, and this will happen in the next couple of thousand years. Um, and how that works is because it's so dry they can't rot, and the sap has been drawn out of the tree. And as the sand blows against the tree, the sand sticks to the sap, and eventually will turn it to stone, which is absolutely amazing. And these, I mean, they're already pretty rock solid right now but it's just it makes an absolutely amazing landscape another, oh, <laughs> so it does still rain here once every four to five years and they got quite a lot of rain here a couple of weeks ago but as you can see it's already all dried up um, so these trees never really had any chance to uh, live past well and they died 900 years ago uh, but yeah this is very very cool check out the detail on the tree as well We're currently walking through canyon water right now. We're going to find the source of the original canyon. How are you guys, how are you guys doing that? Yeah. It's totally awesome. There are no snakes in the US spiders. You just feel them sometimes. I got my pants so upright that I, I cut off my blood flow. <laughs> Renee, how old is the water here? About a week old. So we're currently walking through Six Belts Canyon um, and there's a bunch of baboons walking on the top here that are watching out <laughs> and Rene, our tour guide, is, was talking to them. What are you telling them or are you just making sounds? Coming like this, <coughs> means we're coming into your territory. Right. They're not aware of you. Like, chances of attack is much bigger, the surprise. Right. So if you give the warning sign that they use, they're aware of what's going on. And they become. Desert, desert, desert. But if you spin around, bam, there's a pool. What? What is that doing here? Better make the most of it. Check out this bad boy. Not too much to report today as we've just been pretty much traveling in the bus. Really cool scenery that we got up at 4 a.m. with the stars still out and we drove through the sunrise, um, made a few stops along the way. And yes, now we're here in Fish River Canyon. Now this is the second biggest canyon in the world. Um, started forming 250 million years ago, but it's actually only around 70 million years old as, as a canyon. 
Um, you kind of see the water just behind me over here. There's not very much of it, not quite like the Grand Canyon. Um, a lot of dry hair, obviously. Some water, just down there. Here, we're gonna stay here, watch the sunset, uh, and have a nice dinner overlooking the canyon at sunset. It's gonna be amazing, I can't wait. We've got a short walk around the rim. So we left Fish River Canyon this morning and we've arrived here at our new campsite, Felix Unite. It was a much, much shorter drive today. So the reason it's so green is because we're right by the river, uh, right by the Orange River, which is the border between Namibia and South Africa. Now one of the options today is to go canoeing down the river, or we can just chill and have a swim. Mega, mega chill time. So we're gonna, gonna see what the group wants to do and tag along. <laughs> Felix Unite in Namibia today to the Cedarberg Mountains in South Africa across the border this afternoon. Now we've got Rene cooking us lunch and the guys are just chilling playing cards at our campsite. Here we're on a vineyard which is super cool. We've got wine tasting just up here from the grapes from the vineyard and they do reds, whites, rosés, sparkling, uh, ports as well which is personally one of my favourites um, but we're chilling around. Cape Town had so much to see and do and was vastly different from the rest of the tour. I was really glad we had the proper opportunity to explore the huge city and experience everything it had to offer. Yes. With a whole day free in Cape Town, we hopped on the local open top bus and went on the loop that took us all around the local wine estates, coastal routes and the famous Cape of Good Hope National Park. We even saw some penguins. So holy moly, would you check out this place? This is Groot Wine Estate. This is pretty amazing. So these are all the vineyards just behind me. And you can see, you might be able to see in the distance, Tabletop Mountain and Devil's Peak over there. But this wine estate is probably one of the fanciest places that I've ever been to. So we're going to check out this estate. We're going to see how the wine's made and hopefully taste some of the best wines in the world. <laughs> now if this video has enticed you to visit South Africa and Namibia, click on the tour link I put in the description below or head over to the Tour Radar website for all your travel needs. For even more inspiration, stay around to watch another video and make sure you subscribe to our channel to follow more of my or my fellow travellers' escapades around the world.